What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It is Viewer's Choice Week on The Den. It is Tuesday, which means you have me. Let's go. Okay, so this week I put out the feelers on some different topics from people, and um, I had quite a few people respond to my post um i had my mother shout out to sheila who recommended safe dating practices and i will probably let you know i will do that in a couple of weeks because i kind of covered it last week a little bit with the safety and dating but a little less serious on my next post because last week i was pretty amped up and fired up and angry so this week i am actually going to be discussing um, the concept of liberal conservatives and gay conservatives um, from my good friend Kate Schneider. Uh, her and I worked together at a coffee shop for a few years um, before she transferred to another state to be a general manager and I transferred out of the store to pursue my career. She and I have a really good friendship and she considers herself to be a liberal conservative and um, that's possible. And I know I'm gonna hear flack from people about this because a lot of people want to admit that you can't have one or both or you can't be a little bit of mixture of things. You can, as somebody who has run for political office before, who is very deeply involved in Minnesota politics and US politics, frankly, the concept that you can be toward the middle should not shock people. Um, I know that as a progressive, I struggle to sometimes identify with people who are progressive as well because it's not that I have conservative ideologies, it's that I'm pragmatic. I look at things from a very, very pragmatic perspective of this is what we want, this is what we need to do to get there, and formulating a plan. A lot of times we have these lofty goals of things we want to do and that's speaking from a point of privilege that I can say, you know, we have these really big goals and it's just going to be too hard to get there, um, which it is. It, if it was easy, it would be done already. But uh, the only minority status that I have for myself is the fact that I am gay and disabled, but I mean, my skin color benefits me greatly in life and I acknowledge that. And through my politics, I try to improve the lives of others with that privilege instead of trying to benefit myself. So... With that being said, I think that the concept of a liberal conservative is something that it needs to be more widely accepted. A lot of people will say, well, then that's just accepting the status quo and nothing will ever get done. Well, that's not true. If we had been able to, at least in the United States in 2016, elect Hillary Clinton, not really popular among certain groups and demographics, that's fine. I respect it. If you didn't support her, that's your vote, your choice period. But had we elected her and other seats that went to Republicans that could have gone to a more moderate Democrat instead of holding our noses up to anybody who didn't pass the purity test of the far, far left, we would be in a lot different position than we are now. Um, to simply ignore an entire group of people, and I am talking conservatives, not people who are socially against existence of people of color, LGBTQ community, um, women, uh, people who do that, they are, I'm not talking about those kind of people. I'm talking about conservatives who who work with Democrats, who, who find common ground, who act, though they bring back the meaning of bipartisanship. Um, that's the kind of conversation that I'm having. I think that those kinds of people like myself and Kate, who brought this idea up, her and I have talked about policies and everything that have come up and like, we agree on a lot of stuff. We might not agree on how to get there necessarily, but we can agree on something to the point where we can find common ground, where negotiations should be happening. When you are striking a deal as the president seems to think that he can do, let's cue back to the shutdown that just occurred. When you actually negotiate with someone, there is give and take, there has to be. The concept right now in the White House is that um, Democrats aren't giving up some stuff to get what they want. No, when you earn my vote as a Democrat, if I was in the Senate or in the House, I want some of my stuff on the table, not just yours, and you'll chip away at the bad stuff of yours. My stuff gets on the table too. It's a combination. That is bipartisanship. A tough pill to swallow is not bipartisanship whatsoever. Each side has to take a hit on what they want. When you start having discussions with people that are about what can we actually do to make things happen, the fact that partisanship is now a most votes are party line votes 
speaks a lot to the current status of American political culture. It's, it's stagnant. Nothing is going to happen unless we start electing people to office that are um, from every aspect of the political spectrum, but people who actually want to make meaningful legislation. That's when things start to change. To simply dismiss somebody who is a Republican or a conservative or a moderate or a more liberal conservative or a more conservative liberal, to dismiss that is to completely eliminate the possibility of anything getting done. And I, again, recognize that that comes from a place of privilege to be able to say that I just want something to happen rather than nothing. Um, we do need a lot of things to change. Minimum wage needs to go up in the United States for people to even remotely consider the ability to um, be a, a livable society again. We need to eliminate these corporate tax loopholes. We need to get rid of these tariffs on solar energy. We need to focus on foreign policy that is derived out of diplomacy and not out of um, bullish standoffs. This, it's not, nothing is happening. And I think even the most conservative people in Washington and around the country are starting to realize that all of these huge, insane tax cuts and um, international disasters, quite frankly, for diplomacy, that it's not working. Obviously, it's not working. And that's why you have more and more conservatives that are choosing not to run for office again or run for re-election because they're sick and tired of the administration doing that. And if we had more moderate people who are going to win in districts, that will stay red, period. If it's going to stay red, solid red, we need, we want somebody on the middle ground. We don't want somebody who is so far left or so far right that no one's going to be able to agree with, with that stance. These are important voices in our country. We're not the only ones. Being progressive or liberal or democratic or um, democratic socialist, whatever you want to identify as, if we ignore everyone else, we are simply ignoring a vast chunk of the country just as they are ignoring us it's not nothing is going to be functional out of that concept i i think that we have a lot of great things that we can do in this country i think we have a lot of great things we can do around the world we can't ignore the concept of people that fall in the middle ground just for the sake of political expediency we need to work toward a solution that's actually going to create legislation to pass and to improve people's lives. I, I don't like the term drain the swamp, but now we have to because there is some swampy people in Washington now. And we need to get rid of the people, frankly, on both sides of the aisle that don't want to negotiate, period. That's problematic for me. Um, and I recognize that that is a heated statement in some circles, but it's true. I, I don't want to negotiate with people who it's all or nothing. Um, that's not how politics was designed. That's not what the founders of the Constitution and the United States decided on. Um, if we don't have people from every aspect of life having a seat at the table, and that includes people of color, women, minorities, people who have been told to shut up, um, people who have been trampled over, the people who we killed to create this country, um, if they all don't have a seat at the table and a meaningful seat at the table, then there should not be a meal provided at that table whatsoever. Um, we absolutely deserve the consequences of elections and people need to understand the importance of getting out and voting and getting somebody into office that may not necessarily check off every single box that you have, but enough of them that you're like, you know what, this person's at least going to get something done. And that that can be a tough pill to swallow for some people and, and you have your conscience and I think people should definitely vote with their conscience. But at the same time, time, we have to look at things pragmatically and understand that we could have avoided the situation that we're in right now. So uh, consider this post the unpopular opinion. Um, I'm sure that will ensue in a hellscape of angry people that are now going to call me whatever they want to. Um, being in politics, I'm used to it. I have some unpopular stances. I have some really popular stances. And no matter what stance I take, I'm pissing off somebody. So um, I just think it's really important that we talk about real issues on the den um, that impact everybody on a daily basis. So I hope all of you have a wonderful week. Watch the other videos this week. There are a lot of really great topics coming from viewers like you. Viewers like you. Is that a PBS thing? Like, <laughs> whatever. Anyways, um, so uh, keep watching. Um, subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends. And I will see you next week on the den. Bye.